Welcome. Um, my name is Hope Wilder, and I started a school using sociocracy called Pathfinder Community School in Durham, North Carolina in the US. Um, we had to close because of COVID, but since then I've been working to promote sociocracy with children. And I'll share a little bit more about that work. Um, so sociocracy in general means is a set of tools to help make decisions together. It's an alternative to democracy. So instead of majority rules, you do um, consent-based decision-making. And today I was gonna do a really hands-on workshop. So I would appreciate it if you can turn your video on. Um, if you do wanna stay and it's gonna be like a presentation mixed up with participation. So both, I expect you to do a lot of talking. And if you're like, I just want to hide here and be a, wild, a wallflower, it might not be as good of a fit. Um, I did do a half hour presentation on sociocracy in schools that was pre-recorded earlier in the week. And if you have time to watch that, that's a really great introduction to sociocracy. And also the film School Circles that was, um, that was, filmed, not filmed, you know, it was screened earlier in the conference. Um, the website is schoolcirclesfilm.com. All right, so I'm gonna start sharing my screen. And just, you know, while I'm sharing my screen, I can see your faces, but I can't see the chat. So if you have questions in the chat, um, oh, you can, you can sit in, Stephanie, that's fine for now. Um, so, if you can, I forget your name, who's hosting. If you can read things out when they're in the chat, if you could unmute and read Sorry, things. yeah, and I will rename myself in a second. <laughs> okay, you're just named Summerhill Festival. All right, here we go. Oops, that was the wrong screen. So, welcome to the nuts and bolts of sociocracy with children. Um, a little bit more about me. Like I said, I founded a school. Currently, I'm the sociocracy and schools program manager at Sociocracy for All. And I've written a book about sociocracy with children for families and for schools. It's coming out in November this year. And it'll be available at the Sociocracy for All website and also Amazon and anywhere where you get ebooks, it'll be there. For today, I'm just going to introduce practices of sociocracy. So, like I said, it's a toolkit, it's an alternative to democracy. And some of those tools include consent decision making instead of majority rules, their role selections, which is kind of to select a person for a specific role. The question of what do you decide about together? Um, we'll take a little break. We'll do some decision-making practice and then something I call a change-up meeting, which is where you use these sociocratic tools to change the way that you do things. And we'll end up with a Q&A. So starting off, what is sociocracy? It's a collection of participatory tools that ensure shared power. And this is from a text about sociocracy called Many Voices, One Song. And it's, you could also see it as democracy as it could be. And that's a quote from Kay Spuka, who's the founder of sociocracy. It was founded in a school in the Netherlands in the 1920s. Um, and Kay's and his wife, Betty Cadbury, are Quakers who base their decision-making process off of Quaker consensus. So just a little bit about why I practice sociocracy with children. I've seen kids grow in their confidence. Um, they get empowered. They learn how to problem solve with their peers and at home. And it really turns conflict into curiosity. So instead of saying what's wrong and we don't know what to do about it, it's really about problem solving together. 
And in the larger context, um, I'm a big advocate of children's rights and I wanna build a better future. And just, just another fact about sociocracy, um, it's practiced at home in schools and also in India, there's something called the children's parliaments. If you haven't heard of them, you should definitely look them up. Thousands of children are connected in this democratic movement um, using sociocracy as their decision-making tool um, and they make really great changes in the world around them. So that's something to look into. So starting out with the consent decision-making process, it's not majority rules, it's not consensus. Um, and consent, what you're looking for is your preference or your range of tolerance. So that means what you're okay with. Um, an objection is a reason that you can see that a decision is not good enough for now or not safe enough to try. So it doesn't mean you don't like it. Um, it means you can see a reason to not move forward with the decision. And consent decision-making is all about finding the range of tolerance that everybody can accept. Um, with children and actually with adults too, and what we'll practice in this workshop is what I call thumbs consent. So the question is, are you okay with this decision? And the question is, is it good enough for now? Is it safe enough to try? And then we do thumbs up, thumbs down, or thumbs sideways. So thumbs up is like, I like it. Thumbs sideways is like, I'm okay with it. And then thumbs down is like, I can see a reason this isn't a good idea. I can see a reason it's not good enough or safe enough. And then if people have objections, you really wanna take those objections and find solutions for them. And often objections lead to a much better decision. So unlike in majority rules democracy, people who had objections would just be overruled. Um, you might have time to amend a proposal, but sometimes something just gets passed that people aren't happy about. With consent decision-making, you're trying to make a time-limited decision that everybody can live with for now um, and come back and revisit that decision soon to make sure that everybody is still okay with it. And this is just a fun little thing. I like the thumbs up, thumbs down, thumbs sideways is my favorite, but I've also done the hedgehog of objections with kids. And that's where this is like a comfortable hedgehog who's happy and feels really good. And then the hedgehog would extend its spines and that's the hedgehog on full alert. Like I really have strong feelings about this. I can see a good reason this shouldn't go forward or just one little spine like I have some concerns, you know. Um, so you show us your hand signals and then talk about what the objections are. So I'm gonna skip this and go right into roles. So roles, roles are just a clearly defined area of responsibility for one person. And the fundamental unit of sociocracy is circles. And a circle is like, a unit in the organization that has clearly defined domains and aims or clearly defined area of responsibility. So within that circle, you can assign roles to people to have even more clarity about who's responsible for what. And in circle meetings, a lot of times you'll need a timekeeper. That can be somebody of any age. A scribe would be somebody who has reading and writing skills and a facilitator like what I'm doing today, just facilitating the meeting. Um, and kids can do all of these roles, facilitator, especially after the role has been modeled. Um, and generally I would say, I've worked with kids as young as five who loved being my timekeeper because they're like, eh, your time is up, time to stop talking. You know, they love having the buzzer. Um, and then scribe is more like eight to 10, facilitator might be more like eight to 12 years old. Other roles you could do for children, depending on what you're deciding about, would be a caretaker of a space, the leader of like a cleanup time or chores if you have a school, some other group organization. Tracking a shared budget is a great job for kids. Um, these are just things that I've seen in practice in schools that use sociocracy. And it's important to give opportunities for feedback for people to know how they're doing in a role. So usually we do that at the end of a term, we'll ask, you know, how has this person been doing in the role and what improvements could they make? So I wanted to do a role selection practice 
And I'll just say those of us whose um, videos are on who are willing to unmute, the responsibility of this role, it's a timekeeper for this meeting. The responsibility is to give me a heads up at the one hour mark and the one hour 20 minutes mark. So I wanted to do a quick round of what makes a good timekeeper. So what is necessary for the role of being timekeeper in the meeting today? Um, and I still can't see any of your names. All right, David will go first because you raised your hand. What's a good, what makes a good timekeeper? Uh, well, I would say someone who can read time to Stafa. All right, being able to read time. Anybody else have a qualification? What makes a good timekeeper? Yes. Somebody who can stay focused on the time and stay focused on the topic of the meeting. All right, focused on time and the topic. Anybody else? And usually I'll tell you in sociocracy, I would do a, a round where I would call on everybody, but I can't really do that today because I can't see your names. David, except um, for David. I would say somebody who is uh, happy and confident to be able to interrupt and speak up when the uh, time has come. All right. And lastly, I'll say I'm able to stay the whole meeting since I know some of you can't stay the whole meeting. Yeah, yeah, I'm here, but I'm with my baby, so I, I am here and with you all. Great. Um, next, I'd like to do a round where everybody can unmute in turn and say, how are you personally qualified or not qualified? Because none of us know each other. We don't know like who's always running late or, you know, with kids, it might be who can't read that kind of clock. They can only read a digital clock and you have an analog clock. Um, so how are you personally qualified or not qualified? And I'd like to hear from everybody, even if you know you really can't do it. Um, so I'll start maybe with Leslie and then go to David. And I can't hear you, Leslie. If you can't speak in a moment, I'll just go to David. Okay, so uh, I'm qualified in that I can read the time and I am confident to interrupt and speak out. Um, but I'm potentially not qualified in that, uh, as I said, my internet connection is so weak that uh, it's possible that I would crash out and would uh, miss my responsibilities to remind you when the, the, um, the time is uh, at its uh, point. All right, um, let's go Sue and then Stephanie. Hi, <clears throat> qualified, could read it can pay attention to two things um, at the same time, can speak up. Um, I can't say that I can be um, on video for the whole meeting, but pretty much. All right, um, Stephanie, then Vera. I'm qualified in that I have the abilities mentioned. However, I do have to leave in about 10 minutes. So that would make me a very poor candidate for this particular role today. All right, I'm Vera, then Leslie. Hi, I might just forget. So I'm not a good candidate. <laughs> All right, Leslie, then Kata. All right, Leslie said, She's there with her baby, so maybe we'll just go to Kata. Uh, I think I'm qualified and I have a lovely phone which buzzes if I set it up for a time. Um, and uh, well, I don't know if I'm confident enough to, to just cut you in the middle of the sentence. So maybe I would lose one minute, but uh, because I always try to wait for people to finish their thoughts, um, that's it. All right, so having heard these qualifications, let me see, I always have to do this, which is annoying. 
Having heard these qualifications, who do you nominate and why? And I'll go in the same order. So starting with David. Who do you think would be a good timekeeper of the people here today? And that's a good question. I, I think I'm um, about as qualified as Carter is, but for different reasons. Um, but I think between us, uh, I would, uh, I would, can I vote for myself or? Uh, oh yeah, you can self-nominate. Um, so yeah, I would, uh, I would maybe nominate my, myself. I'm, I'm fairly hopeful that my internet wouldn't crash out, in which case I would be fully qualified for the role, but uh, yeah, we'll see. All right, then Sue, who would you nominate and why, having heard all the reasons and heard all the qualifications? David, he's qualified and he wants to do it. All right, Stephanie, who would you nominate and why? What happens if I'm comfortable nominating two people? That's fine, you can just say two people. So I would nominate either Kata or David. They both seem qualified and fairly willing, I think, on both parts. So that would be my nomination. All right, um, Vera then Kata. She's gonna kill me, but it's Kata. She has to stay here anyway till the end. <laughs> As she said, she has a lovely phone and I trust her that she can cut you if she has to. All right, so having heard these nominations and these reasons, I would nominate Kata for Timekeeper. Um, knowing that she might let me go over a minute to finish a thought. I'm fine with that. So thumbs up, thumbs down, or thumbs sideways for Kata as timekeeper of the meeting. Can just show in the video. Thumbs up, thumbs up, thumbs up. Thumbs sideways, Kata. <laughs> so Kata, do you consent to being nominated timekeeper? I do. <laughs> and thank you for being honest with your thumbs sideways. You're like, I don't know if I like this. Um, so that's, that's the sociocratic selection process. And you can see it's a quick, easy way to find out who's qualified and to select somebody who's just good enough for now to do a job for the, for the purpose of the group that you're in. Um, David, question. Yeah, just, just out of interest. Um, it, I'm assuming it is obviously possible to have two people to share the same job. You know, if for instance, um, Carter weren't confident to speak out that I was, but maybe I wasn't so good at, at uh, um, keeping track of the time. You know, is it is it acceptable in 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 this uh, uh, process to kind of have two people do the same job? Sure, and it it all depends on the group and like what comes up during the nominations process. So um, a lot of times I've seen two people who are equally qualified for a job, then one person is nominated and the other is backup, or you figure out a, a way to share the role. So like you said, sharing the responsibilities. Um, in that case, it might be hard for you to interrupt because like Kata would have to tell you that it's time and then you would interrupt, but she would be interrupting anyway to tell you that it's the time. So like logistically, it would be hard in this role, but for something like Scribe, you could have one person take notes and the other person type them up or for facilitator, you could take turns. I'm gonna facilitate the selection process. You facilitate our meeting evaluation, you know, things like that. Cool, another question, Stephanie. I think I missed where, how did we get from nominating Kata and not David in that situation? Did I miss something there or did we- It was just process? me. It was okay. I listening, listening to the reasons given the oh, facilitator okay. proposes somebody. Um, and Got the facilitator it. should propose somebody not by number of um, votes, so to speak, but by the reasons given. So the reason I selected Kata was both, I know she has to stay for the whole meeting. She said she has a lovely phone and um, David's internet might go out. So I was like, I really need somebody who I can depend on with the internet issue was the, my paramount objection. Perfect. That's wow. what I had missed was realizing that you were speaking as facilitator rather right. than as another and I one should, of us. So I should you. have made that clear that I was speaking as facilitator. So, all right, I will move on. So the next thing, if you're going to practice sociocracy with children, you need to know what are you deciding about. Um, 
And the question is really, what are the areas that the children can fully decide about? Like, what can you completely give them control over? So in a democratic free school context, some of what the children have control over might be they choose their own classes or they just choose their activities for the day. Um, and then in what context do you want a voice for consent? So an adult might want voice for consent in terms of safety reasons, or you might wanna keep safety reasons just for the adults and not have the children making safety reasons because of like legal challenges or things like that. And it's, it's really important to know, to really be clear on what remains within the adult's domain and what is in the child's domain or um, the children's domain. So I'm curious, or does any of you have children in your life that you wanna practice sociocracy with? And if so, like, what are you thinking about deciding with them or is it more like abstract? I have big children, 16 and 19 years old. And we definitely are in a place of trying to figure out how to live together as kind of almost adults. But I do have to leave in a couple of minutes. So I, I clearly need to connect with you another time. So I don't, that doesn't need to be the, the situation that you work through at all. Cool. Yeah, that's, that's interesting though. Um, and you can get in touch with me. I'll just say it out loud. And maybe Kata, if you can put it in the chat, but my email is hope.wilder at sociocracy for all.org. Um, so if you need to follow up with me, I'm happy to. So yeah, great. Could you repeat that? Sorry, I wasn't quick enough. Yep, yeah, hope.wilder at sociocracy for all.org. Thank you. So um, just an example domain then would be the chores, like how are we going to divide up chores in our house or what are we going to have for dinner? Um, in a school, it might be, what are the rules for our school? Or um, what are we going to do about running in the hallways? You know, things like this could be the kinds of things you're deciding about. And generally I find like in the school or home context, there's two major kinds of decisions. There's, well, three, there's activity decisions, budgetary decisions, and then decisions about how you do things like process oriented decisions. Um, and I'm gonna cover all three today, but we're gonna practice the process oriented decisions. So um, for activity decisions, you might be just uh, using a feedback round to come up with ideas. So like, um, where do you think we should go on a field trip and why? Just like we did the selection process for a role, you can do the selection process for an idea of an activity. Then you take notes, you ask for a change round, just like we did in the selection process. You know, having heard all these ideas about where to go on a field trip, which one are you most excited about? Maybe you thought you wanted to go to the science museum, but then you're like, hey, the playground sounds fun too. And then as facilitator, you propose the activity with the most energy for consent. And it takes kind of feeling out the group, like what, what is the most energy? And it might be the thing with the most votes, or it might just be like, it looks like everybody's really wiggly. So I think we should go to the playground where people can run and be loud today. Um, as well as what they, they nominate for themselves. Then go do the activity and have fun. Um, so yeah, games to play, like what game should we play at recess? What field trip should we go on? Or in a school, it could be what workshops are we going to offer? You know, I want a science workshop. I want an art workshop, et cetera. And then see, you know, maybe you can have five workshops and you can do all of the ones that people have ideas for. Then a discretionary budget. I've found if you want kids to participate in decision-making, giving them money is like a really powerful way to do that. And it could be a set amount, like an allowance, but like a family allowance instead of an individual allowance. Um, it could be weekly, monthly. And the idea is what would meet our group's needs best and asking questions like, what do you wanna spend our money on taking turns in a circle and then you nominate, I think we should spend the money on this first and see if you can get consent. And generally what I do is 
kind of estimate. Let me see. Estimate how much something costs and bring that to the meeting and then just keep going until you've you've spent your budget basically. Um, so yeah, keep going until you've spent the budget. If you do agree to buy things with children, I would buy them quickly and also let them spend the money on anything as long as it's safe and it follows your group agreements. So I've seen it happen where we spent money on candy, on ice cream, on field trips, on art materials, um, also sometimes educational supplies, but generally sugar. And the idea was that we didn't have any rules at the school against eating sugar and um, the process was more important than the product. So it wasn't just we're getting candy, it was we're deciding together how to use this money and how to meet everybody's needs. So some examples of things we bought at the school I founded, we spent um, $200 a month and we had an elected kid treasurer with a staff member to help track. And you can see we went on a field trip to a trampoline gym, we bought Minecraft, um, some foam swords. We have a room called the rumpus room where kids could jump around and we bought cushions. So basically any kind of supplies for the school um, we would buy through this discretionary budget. And the kids in the picture have a store called the snack store. They noticed a need in the community, the idea of what would meet our group's needs. Some kids were going hungry at snack time. And the kids said, well, let's buy snacks with the shared money and give the snacks away for free at snack time. So that's an example of kids, you know, utilizing the group resources to meet people's needs. Um, and when in doubt, if you're working with a group of kids making decisions together, I would suggest get feedback, 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 feedback. Um, feedback is a critical part of sociocracy. And the idea is to just figure out where everybody is and keep, keep an eye on like the pulse of the community. So um, I'd like to do another scenario, if that would be fun. And to nominate where, well, wait, let me think about this. I wanna wait to do the scenario because I think I have Q&A next. Um, but basically you would do a round of nominations of where you would wanna go on a field trip, the facilitator, would bring research and bring back to the group and then propose an idea for consent. So you don't need to make the kids do all the research themselves if they're not able to do that. Um, and then I like to build up to group proposal forming, um, starting out with small steps. So just taking, taking small steps, listening to the children, hearing what they have to say, capturing it, writing it down and bringing it back to them for consent. And I'll give more examples of this in detail later of what that looks like. Any questions? And if you can just unmute and go for it if you have a question. Um, maybe just a clarification. Um, mm -hmm. you're, you're, you're kind of retaining a, a small element of control you're saying for instance um bring a fixed amount or, or a plan ahead to what amount you're going to bring to the budget or um that you suggest as a facilitator the uh, activity which has the most energy in the room um I, i'm just wondering how, uh, kind of what's what's the risk that uh, children who aren't fully accustomed to the kind of principles of sociocracy would feel the need to go along with the suggestion, even though they, they don't yet maybe have the confidence to to realize that their vote is is equal and that they can speak out against the the adult or or, or whatever. Right. Um, I think that it's, I, I guess I would say, yes, you can come up with a budget sociocratically to start with. Um, and you might have limits within your organization. Like it might be that the budget circle is a whole circle that decides, well, this is how much money we have to spare, you know? Or that in a family, the adults might be the ones holding the, the budget and, and yeah, they're giving it to the kids. So that is a case of, 
the adults having the power by default and having to choose to share it rather than a bottom up. A bottom up approach would be if kids did their own fundraising effort and then they can make as much money as they can and use it however they want. You know, it's that's completely within their own domain. And as far as um, the facilitator does have more power and it's important to elect a kid facilitator as soon as possible because um, I think it's hard to have that dual role of adult and facilitator without the lack, you know, there being a lack of trust. But at the same time, I made this presentation for somebody who's starting out using sociocracy with kids with the idea that it's like a game that you have to teach them the rules to, and they won't really know how to play the game unless they've seen it played before. Um, and generally, I've seen kids be able to start facilitating after like a month or two um, of using these tools. So I hope that answered the question. I saw your thumbs up. It, it did, yes, absolutely. Um, it kind of the, the idea of passing it off as, as soon as possible um, is, is, is good. I guess, obviously, if that's voted that way, I guess equally you, the adult, could continue to be voted as the person to be the facilitator. Exactly. Completely true. And you would just use that same selection process for that. Any other questions? If not, I'll move on. All right, we have another fun, fun thing. And that is um, we can pretend that we're in a special group today. It's like our team. And the question is, what are we gonna name our group? Um, so what do you wanna name this group and why? What do you think would be a fun name for the group? And I would actually like somebody else to facilitate. So I've got the prompts here. Um, so what do you wanna name the group and why? Do you have any changes? And then the facilitator proposes for consent. So I'm gonna nominate David for facilitator because he's been the most frequent unmuter. Are you willing to facilitate this, David, in practice? Um, do, do we go through the, uh, the sort of the skills and not skills thing? Um, or, or, or no, is it just simply responding? there's no skills in this one. It's just why, um, nice. just what do you want to name the breakout group and why? We could ask like what makes the good a good name for the breakout group. Like that would be our qualifications, so to speak. But I guess in this example, I'm just showing that you can skip that for time. Um, so maybe our qualification is just a name that everybody's okay with. We're okay with me using this name until the end of the meeting, even if it's a silly name. Uh... I, I can try to facilitate, certainly. I'm, I'm totally unimaginative, so I, I'm not trying to <laughs> come up with a name. But, uh, uh, yeah, well, that's so the group's you, job. Yeah, so, so does the, the facilitator doesn't, doesn't contribute to the, or can they? Like the they can, they can. I just forgot to last time. OK, fair enough. OK, yes, I'll, I'll give uh, facilitating a, a go. Um, Thank you. So I guess well, I, I, I go around the circle, do I? Uh, first on my list would be uh, Sue. Uh, Sue, do you have any suggestions for the, uh, the name of what we should call the group? I like the name of the school, Pathfinders. <laughs> Pathfinders, okay. Thank you. Uh, Carter is next on my list. Well, at first I went for the name Hope. Because <laughs> not just because it's your name, but because really it, it gives us hope. Uh, this kind of uh, th this way of uh, um, communicating and and getting on uh, decisions. Uh, but I really like uh, what what Sue uh, just mentioned, the Pathfinder, because that's another very good way. So I can't decide right now which which one to choose. So if I can drop two, then I would. Do both. Okay, noted. Uh, Hope, you're next on my list. Um, I think the name that I would pick today is 
sociocracy nerds. And then I will pass. Okie dokie. Um, is Vera with us? Yes, yes, but yeah, I like Sue's idea and afterwards it's so hard to come up with something else. I just I just stay with that. If it's possible not to say another name. Uh, well, uh, I, I guess we can uh, go around the circle again and, and have a, a sort of a, a yay or nay to, uh, to names as well. So uh, you can you can pass without saying, yep. Uh, Jason, is Jason with us? Yes, I'm here. I was thinking uh, Zoomers, like boomers, but with the Zoom, Zoomers. <laughs> okay, it's a very uh, active sounding, uh, active sounding name. <laughs> Vera seems to approve. Uh, Mirto, is Mirto with us? Yes, I'm here. <laughs> um, um, I don't know, I was thinking about having a name of animals or something. So maybe the, um, the rats. <laughs> uh, sorry, say that one again. Rats. Oh, the rats. Okay, right. Okay, is that everyone? Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. I think that's everyone uh, accounted for there. Uh, well, Pathfinder seemed to have uh, quite a lot of popularity to it. Um, um. So now, so now, before you nominate, just to ask if anybody has had changes after they've heard anybody. Um, uh -huh. I mean, after they've heard everybody speak, and we can do raised hands for that. Yes, I, I suppose I should follow the instructions. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, does anyone have any changes they wish to say? I see Carter has a hand up. Carter. Yes, I really like Zoomers. <laughs> you really like it's really Zoomers. fun. Okay. Okie doke. Sue, you want to change as well? I like Zoomers too. Okay. We, we seem to be changing our uh, opinions a bit. Yeah, I hope uh, is other hand up there too. Um, I also like Zoomers. I think it's really fun. Okay, uh, Jason, I see you uh... were. Well, I had another idea, um, vexed, because sometimes we get frustrated when we're Zooming, so vexed, we feel vexed. <laughs> so I don't you know if we have to go back around again because I threw that in or. <laughs> uh, well, I, th I think uh, there, there, there seems to be a, a certain preference uh, in, in the group, but uh, it, it seems to be that we've uh, changed a lot of our opinions. Let, let me see, am I doing the right order of these things? Any changes? Facilitator proposes consent. Okay, so uh, I like the, the positivity of Zoomers, um, although... Uh, I, I see where Jason is coming from in his proposal with Vexed. Uh, I, I think that maybe has some potentially negative connotations to it. So we should maybe try and stay positive in the, in the group. So I would, uh, I would propose that we adopt the name Zoomers. Um, so should we go around the group and do uh, consent or not consent? Um, we can do thumbs up, thumbs down, thumbs sideways for just quick. Consent and you can okay, either oh, use. Yeah, I see one, two, three, uh, one thumb sideways. Uh, Vera's got a thumbs up. I, I'll do a thumbs up too. And I don't see Murto, but uh, I'll see. Okay, thank you, everyone. Uh, that seems to Early. be. She said, okay, in the change, uh, ch change chat. Yeah, I agree ah, with Sorry. You. <laughs> uh, okay for Zoomers, yes, okay, so that's that's one more. Um, do I have to address Jason's a uh, kind of uh, nope. thumbs, thumb sideways? No. Nope, that is still consent because it's within the range of tolerance, upper sideways. Okay. If it so was a thumbs this, down, yeah. then you would talk about it, so. Okay, so I didn't see any thumbs downs, so uh, <laughs> I guess that's uh, bang the gavel and we've accepted, uh, oh, he's changed his mind now. Why? What what is your objection to uh, to Zoomers, Jason? Um, sorry to be difficult. I, I'm sorry I was late to joining <laughs> as well. 
Um, well, I know that boomers, it's kind of close to boomers. It's kind of where I was thinking that I got it from. And that can be offensive to some people from the boomer generation. Uh, so I just wanted to throw that in before. Um, I don't know if anyone wanted to consider that before we do one last thumbs up. So I can, I can step in here because I haven't um, suggested how to resolve objections yet. Um, so basically, if you have an objection, you first ask the person the reasoning for their objection. So Jason gave us his reason that it, mm -hmm. similar to boomers, might be offensive to some people. Um, then you ask the person who objected, do they have a solution? So do you have a solution for this, Jason? No, I'm OK with it. I just thought other people might find it offensive. Um, then you can ask the group for consent again, just asking, like, considering what Jason has said about Zoomers, Boomers, do you still consent to um, Zoomers as a name? So we could do that. Thumbs up, thumbs down, thumbs sideways. Hey, uh, what uh, Hope said, go for it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm seeing thumbs, 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 excellent. Okay, and uh, presumably in the chat, that's uh, Murta hasn't changed her mind. Right, okay, thank you. Yay, we have consent. We always celebrate decisions. Thank you. And thanks for objecting, Jason, because that's um, a really great thing uh, to welcome. see examples of. Happy to object anytime. So moving forward, um, I want to do another participatory practice with you guys that's called change up meeting. And with the change up meeting, we will determine how to use the rest of the time of the workshop, basically. So um, Change Up Meeting comes from Agile Learning Centers, which is a kind of school that's based off of democratic free schools, basically. And they're all over the world using Agile tools. Um, this is also inspired by Sociocracy 3.0 and nonviolent communication needs sort of framework. And it starts with driver statements, which is just starting out with what's happening. So like what's happening, what problems and opportunities are arising? And then asking what's needed next. So you might wanna identify the needs in the situation from group needs, like the group needs clarity, the group needs action on this problem or individual needs, like an individual needs safety and individual needs autonomy. And then you try to balance in your proposals, balance the needs of the individual and the needs of the group. So an example, and I'm gonna use an example from, it could be a school, an art class, or even a family. What's happening is that people are leaving paint on paintbrushes. Um, so the first step of, in a change up meeting would be to announce to the whole group, hey, people are leaving paint on paintbrushes. This is our problem. Um, it could also be an opportunity, like the wall would be more beautiful with a mural on it, might be an example of an opportunity, or there's a free day at the Science Museum coming up next Wednesday, could be an opportunity. Then um, the way that I do this with kids is to gather these awarenesses of what's happening before the meeting. And you can ask in feedback rounds, like, hey, what problems do you see? What opportunities do you see? Or you can just listen to the kids and be like, oh, I've noticed that um, people are tripping over the shoes by the door. Um, and that seems to be really annoying. So maybe that's a problem we can bring up and change up meeting. And I'd say that listening and noticing problems really helps kids feel included without putting them on the spot. And I found often that like in, there's that issue of trusting adults when you're trying to implement a democratic process or share power with children. And they might not want to speak up when it's their turn to speak up in the circle, but they might speak to you one on one. So it's really important to gather that information whatever way you can. The next step is identifying the needs involved. So the needs for these paintbrushes that keep being dirty is everybody needs to be able to use them. And if they're dirty, you know, you can't use it if it's all crusty and then you have to get a new paintbrush. So you want the needs to be related to what's happening, group needs or individual needs. Then the step three is you make a proposal. The proposal here is that everyone must be trained in how to wash the paintbrushes properly. And 
at the school, we would do this in breakout groups of five to seven people, each with like a different issue. So we'd read three or four issues of the day and take rounds for ideas. You know, what's your idea of a solution for this problem? Then the facilitator listens and tries to incorporate all the problem, I mean, the solutions together to a single statement and tries to fit it on one to two sticky notes. So really short, sweet, quick proposals and then asking for thumbs up, thumbs down, thumbs sideways in that breakout group. The last step is to ask questions for evaluation. So with the, the facilitator comes up with these questions and writes them down and you'll answer the questions at the next check-in. So check-in questions for the paint brushes might be, is everybody able to use the brushes? Tying into the needs of the group. And then are they clean? Like, did we actually solve the problem? So you're asking if the needs are being met, is the problem being solved, and are any concerns that people thought of happening? And I'll get to that in a little bit because that's another possible objection. Um, and I'll just say as far as the concerns happening, like if somebody um, brought up the concern about the Zoomers, Boomers later, you know, we could say, hey, is anybody offended by this in the future? Um, that could be a way to resolve the objection. I'm not sure if that made sense. Or if like in the future, um, Kata missed her, her time, we could say, is the timekeeper getting the time correct? That would be a check-in question that you could evaluate like how well is this person doing at the job or how well is the proposal doing at meeting these needs or solving these problems. And then the last step, you announce the decision. So in this change of board, people are leaving paint on the paintbrushes. The needs are everybody needs to be able to use them. Proposal, everyone must be trained in how to wash them properly. And then we would ask, is everyone able to use them and are they clean? So at the end of this meeting, you set the check-in date and say, next week, we're gonna check in and ask these questions about the paintbrushes. And at the check-in, you ask, are the current proposals working? If they're not, you can redo the whole process, just basically scrap the proposal and do a new proposal. And if it is working, it can be graduated to community practice. So you could think of that as like rules or shared agreements. Um, people have different words for it, but basically this is the way we do things here. Um, the way we do things with paintbrushes is that we train people how to wash them and that's how we keep them clean. So now it is our turn. This is gonna be fun. And can everybody see the change up board? Can somebody just answer verbally? Yes. Cool. So what's happening in the workshop today that you see as either a problem or an opportunity? And this is related to how we will spend the next 30 minutes. Anybody can raise their hand. Um, I saw somebody raise their hand. David raised his hand. Go for it. Um, I wonder if not many people being here is a problem. All right. Anybody else have a problem or an opportunity that you see? And it might be something that we're not doing in the workshop that you want to see more of or something you want to see less of. Um, I'm using this to help plan the rest of what we do. Um, sorry. <laughs> Go for it, David. Sorry, Sue was first before me. Oh, Sue. Sure, Sue, go for it. It would be good to get some more background on people. I really don't know much about the context of where people are coming from. The other people in the workshop? Yes. Cool. And maybe one more idea problem or opportunity. And I think David has one. Uh, just to uh, follow Jason's approach of trying to be difficult. Uh, and I'd just be saying things like, uh, you know, I'm, I'm doing all the work and nobody else is contributing anything, which obviously isn't <laughs> true, but uh, just, just, <laughs> just to be difficult. 
Awesome, Sue. I needed to bolt to lower my hand, sorry. Oh, okay, no problem. So then moving on to needs, what is the need attached to not many people being here? And I guess I guess a need I would see is like camaraderie. Don't know if that's how you spell that. Anybody else can think of a need for having more people in the workshop? People to contribute. Ah, contribution. Cool. Then the need expressed with, we want to know more about where people are coming from or more background on people. And I'll ask Sue, since this was your question. Like, what do you think? What's the need that you're expressing? It would feel more authentic. So authenticity, great. And David, David is doing all the work. What's your need? To, to do less work, I think. <laughs> or or, or to, yeah, maybe to be fair, to, to get everyone to share the work. Ah. Cool. Then um, I'm gonna ask somebody who's not David, I'm, I'm gonna actually do a round. So just calling on people in turn and asking, do you have an idea, a proposal to meet any one of these, these problems? Like what could we do in the next 30 minutes to help alleviate these problems or seize these opportunities? And I will start with Kata. Wow, we could do a short round, uh, everyone telling their about the background, so that would solve one of our problems. Uh, I can't help on the not many people are here, I'm sorry. I did all the promotion work <laughs> I could. And actually Facebook being done for I don't know how many hours now, it didn't make it easy. And I agree with David that he is doing all the work. <laughs> So I don't have any proposal for that. All right, and then I'll go to Vera. Is Vera still here? Yeah. Yeah, 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 I'm here. I don't know, when I, I'm a teacher and when I have the feeling that I do all the work, that usually means I'm doing too much. And I, if I sit back, then, I, then that forces the kids to do the work. So maybe you could just, <laughs> you could just not do the work and that, probably we are going to feel uncomfortable not doing anything and step up. <laughs> awesome. I love the emoji there, David. Then um, how about Sue? We'll go Sue and then um, Merto. Um, on more background, I like the short round idea. Cool. Then um, Myrto and then Andrea. Uh, for, yes, for the first thing, maybe do more, uh, maybe change the time of the seminar. Uh, and for the second one, um, at make a, a game for um, meeting each other and but I mean through a game and uh, <laughs> for the third one um, yes we can share <laughs> sharing work all right um Andrea then Jason yeah, hello. So for the first uh, uh, proposal permits also a change of time. Uh, for the second, maybe an introduction round at first or 
or something like that, or a game or something that we uh, uh, can know each other. And the last one, when David will not do all the work, then the others have to. So <laughs> step back, David, and let others do the work. <laughs> all right, um, Jason. It's one hour, sorry. Um, Thank you, uh, for, the first, for the first one, the same as everybody else. I would have thought live stream, Facebook, something, but that's down. Uh, the second one, I like the idea of uh, some sort of a game, like uh, two truths and a lie. And um, I can help David like co-chair if he needs. Cool. All right, I can't see if anybody else is in the room. Is there anybody else in the room or is that everybody? David. Um, it is actually really difficult to sit back and not, <laughs> not do anything. Uh, I, had a, I had a thought for the first one, mm -hmm. actually is um, increasing participation of the few people that are here might actually reduce the, uh, the kind of the the effect of not many people being here if that makes nice. sense mm -hmm. all right and then i'll do another round for check-in questions and if you don't have a, a question um you can pass and don't worry i'll we'll do consent after we do the check-in questions because we want to know how do we know if we have a good proposal if that makes sense so um, I'll go Vera, then Kata. How will we know any of these proposals are working? No ideas, that's fine. Um, Kata. No idea. <laughs> no idea. Um, then Andrea, how will we know if this proposal is working? Mm. There will be more people. <laughs> All right. Or more um, talk. Mm -hmm. All right. Then Murto. Sorry. Um, mm. For this, I don't know. So we, we try to, to find the solution or what the solution will bring to us? Um, this, the question is, how will we know if it's successful? So it's a question we can ask, like, I'll put this into the question. Not many people are here is the problem. So are there more people here? Is a question we can use in the future to ask you know, or is, is there more talk and participation? And then we can ask if those things are happening. So basically at the end of the meeting, it's a question we would ask to try to see like, hey, did this happen? Did it work? Okay, so for, um, for the second, for example, it, will, it would be something like, um, have we used a, a short round of games to to meet each other or something like this. Nice. Then I'll go to, I think I said Jason next and we'll go Jason then David. Sounds good. Um, well, I think more for the first one, I have more of an objection. Um, can you um, hold, can you hold it? Yes, yes. Okay. Um, are we doing all three or just the first one? Um, questions for, we'll gather questions for all three and then we'll go and do consent to the proposals. Okay. Um, I think that uh, for the second one, if we are all doing that, that's gonna get us all involved and I think that will have less work for David. Mm -hmm. So that would be like a win-win for, for the questions for David. He's gonna do less work if we're doing the game. Cool. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. okay. 
All right, David. Um, yeah, I'd, I'd kind of maybe slightly rephrasing that one. Is David happy with the amount of work that he's doing? Ah. All right. Maybe, maybe David likes talking and, uh, and, and just doesn't <laughs> want to do quite that much, but still wants to do most of it. And uh, for, for the second one, just a suggestion, maybe uh, can, can people say one thing about everybody else in the group, which would uh, kind of demonstrate they are Uh, you know, the, the, that we're not all just strangers sitting in a group. Oops. All right, then Sue. I don't know how you measure this, but I keep getting um, an increase in vibrancy and friskiness. <laughs> Are we more vibrant and frisky? All right, did I miss anybody? And I guess I would say usually I would contribute too, but I feel like this is just so excellent. So let's do, if we feel like this is complete, um, the proposal for not many people being here for next time would be to change the time of the seminar. Clearly we can't change it today because it's already, it's already happening. Um, and increasing the participation of those are, who are here. So thumbs up, thumbs down, or thumbs sideways, how do you feel about increasing participation of those who are here? See thumbs up, thumbs up. I don't see Myrto or, okay, I see Andrea. I think Myrto is the only one. Vera says thumbs sideways, but that is consent. You don't have to be excited about it. Um, Second proposal, a short round to make a game for introductions. Um, so, and I might propose that that game be two truths and a lie, since that was the, that was the proposal from Jason. Anybody have an objection to doing that? Immediately after this, we will play a game of two, two truths and a lie. David says thumbs down. Awesome. Vera says thumbs down. I love it. Sideways. Sideways. Okay, David, what's your objection? Uh, I just really hate those kind of games. I, I'm, I'm always totally uh, put on the spot. I uh, don't know what to say. <laughs> All right, then Vera. We're the same, <laughs> mostly, and the time is not right now. Okay, then Jason. Uh, well, I wasn't sure what time this was supposed to end because I have to go like 2.55 our time. So in like 18 minutes. So I don't know that we would have time for the game. All right. Don't have time. So anybody who objected or anybody at all, do you have an idea of what to do instead to meet this need of authenticity, to be able to say one thing about each other as a group, to feel more vibrant? Any ideas of how we could do that? Vera. Yeah, maybe you could do the work or someone and just say stuff about us and we can say if it's true about us or not, like just by raising our hands if it's true. And then we learn stuff about each other without having to talk about ourselves. Oh. Sorry, I'm too tired to do more work than that. <laughs> awesome. Then I saw two other people raise their hands. Kata. Oh, I just thought maybe if everyone just saying one sentence about themselves, that would be enough and very quick. Um, anybody else? And the same as Kata, just a, a simple quick introduction would, uh, would suffice. All right, then I propose we do a round immediately after this. Oh, Myrto has a raised hand, go for it. Uh, I have almost the same, like something like saying the name and something that you really like doing, but very quick. All right. 
So any objections to having a short round of saying one sentence about yourself, maybe something you really like doing. Um, and I'll save this raise hands if true game. Maybe you raise your hand if you like the same thing that the other person has said. So that'll make it easier if I like bicycling, then you know, raise your hand, I like biking too. Any objections? I see thumbs up, thumbs up. Thumbs up, thumbs up. Thumbs up, we have a decision. It reminds Yay. of the thumbs sideways, but I can't find the emoji for that. So. <laughs> thumbs sideways is good enough. Then last but not least, um, the proposal that David sits back, others can share the work. Jason can co-chair if there's something that needs to be facilitated. Um, thumbs up, thumbs down, thumbs sideways. Uh, thumbs down for me sitting back, but thumbs up for Jason co-chairing. <laughs> David likes participating. We'll see if David is happy with the amount of work that he's doing. How about David sits back to the extent that he is able to? Does that work for you, David? Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Yay, we did a change of meeting. So now um, immediately we're gonna go into a quick round see if we can increase some vibrancy and participation of what's your name and the time doesn't fit. Oh, I have an hour and a half for this meeting. I think we can do a quick round of what's your name and something you like, something you wanna introduce about yourself. We'll go Kata to Jason. Hi, I'm Kata and I'm Hungarian and I'm a mother of three kids who go to Samhail. And anything you like that you want to share? Cats. <gasps> I like cats. All right, Jason, then Sue. I'm Jason. I live in Texas. I am allergic to cats, um, but I like the outdoors. Hiking, biking, anything outdoors. All right, Sue, then me. I'm Sue. I live in Tucson, Arizona. Um, retired holistic teacher, author of Pockets of Freedom, Unlocking the Power of Intuitive Teaching and Learning, and Beacon, um, Creative Mavericks, Beacons of Authentic Learning. I love cats. Um, I'm Hope, and I'll go me and then David. Um, I live in Durham, North Carolina in the US. Um, I work with sociocracy with kids and I like playing the cello. So I'll just say I like playing music in general. David and then Murto. Uh, okay, my name's David. Um, I've lived in seven different countries and I like foreign language films. Murto then Andrea. Uh, I'm Mirto, I'm an animator for groups for theatrical games, and uh, I am from Athens, and I like cats, um, and uh, I also like uh, rats. <laughs> cats and rats, okay, Andrea, I don't know if it's Andrea or Andrea. I am Andrea, I am from Slovakia. Uh, I am more of a dog person than a cat person, <laughs> but uh, cats are okay. I have a small um, democratic group of um, children that I co-lead and I uh, like to be creative with them or without them also. Cool. Thanks, everybody. We shared. Yay. Um, so now I want to go ahead. We have about 10 minutes left. And I'm just going to go ahead and um, ask our questions. No, I'm going to do Q&A. That's what I'm going to do. Any questions about what we just did, change up meeting process, or about sociocracy, or about cats, you know, just questions. 
And then we'll wrap up with an evaluation round at the very end. No questions. Maybe one question just to, to talk. Um, shouldn't, shouldn't we test whether we now feel that we know at least one thing uh, about it? Yes, who, we're going to do was, that. Who was paying attention? Oh, we can do that next. Uh, Myrto. Because I wasn't from the first minutes with you. Uh, I, I don't know if you have said if you have used uh, sociocratic methods with um, uh, infants, I mean, from, I don't know, three to, to six. Um, I have used sociocratic methods with ages five to six, but okay. not as young as three. Um, I think that would be great to try. I think they could at least do thumbs up, thumbs down, thumbs sideways or they could do the little hedgehog of objections. I think either of those things would work. Okay, thank you. Um, Jason. I had a question on, um, on the list, like if you go through and there's one that's put up and then it goes around and people agree later that maybe that wasn't a problem, can you take that down or do you just keep it up and just right in the end, like solve the problem? Because I was yeah. thinking on the first one, like. It said, you know, that there's not enough people, but then I was thinking, well, it's really nice that it's a small group because when you get 20 people on a Zoom, you don't get this personal interaction. It's much harder. Um, so I don't know, like for those objections, does it stay up? Does it go down? How would that work? Right. If the, the group agreed that it's not a problem, then you could just take it off and say, you know, this really isn't a problem. We'll, we'll leave room for more problems, more opportunities. Cool. Then. Kata. I just have no idea if you wanted to uh, for me to let you know about the time at 45 or at 50. Thank because... you. <laughs> so we have about five minutes. Um, what I would like to do is asking if you know something about somebody who is here, just one thing about one person, type it in the chat. We won't go around everybody, everything. <laughs> oh, joke there about Terry. All right, it looks like it looks like we've learned things about each other. I just want to quickly ask, we just did this change up meeting process, do we do we do? And we have some evaluation questions. So question, did people other than David talk since we identified that as a problem? Thumbs up, did people other than David talk? And David, are you happy with the amount of work you're doing in the workshop? Some sideways. <laughs> All right, some sideways. Um, was there more talk and participation since we identified that as a problem? Yes, I'm seeing lots of lots of thumbs. And are we are we more vibrant and frisky? Did we use a round to meet each other? Some vibrant, some not so much. It's okay if you're not feeling that way, but that was one of our evaluation questions. So I hope, I hope that helps you understand how you can use a quick and easy version of sociocracy to evaluate how things are going and to change like at the meta level, what's going on in your group. Um, even in this workshop, we identified all these patterns of like what's happening in the room here with the Zoomers. Um, and the vexed sociocracy nerds. Um, and that was, I really enjoyed that a lot. Um, now we'll just do a quick checkout. Is there anything that you're leaving the meeting with um, 
that something you enjoyed, something you think could have been done better, um, and just throw it in the chat. I just wish we had more time. And I really hope that you come to the first festival in person. <laughs> and yes. you do a really just, you know, a longer workshop for us. I would love that. If anybody else wants to um, unmute, that would be fun. And I'm going to share my screen one more time. Just to show if you want to learn more, um, I'm the manager of the Sociocracy for All Sociocracy in Schools website, which is sociocracyforall.org forward slash schools. Um, I wrote a book about sociocracy with children. It's called Let's Decide Together. It's coming out mid-November and you can keep track of it at sociocracyforall.org for updates. And if you want to contact me, there is my email address and I do workshops. I do presentations. This is my job. This is my life. Hope.wilder at sociocracyforall.org. And I will put, um, I will stop sharing and I will put those links in the chat. And then I will make room for the next presentation. And thanks everybody for coming. If you can unmute and say bye. I feel very connected to this group of Zoomers Thank now. You. So. Thank you. Bye everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.